My name is J.D. Weinstein. I'm here with Capital Factory. Welcome. We're happy to host you here. Um, welcome to the second day of Austin Startup Week. <laughs> We're honored to, uh, to have Senator Cornyn here with us today. Uh, thank you, Austin Technology Council, for putting on a great event. We have a wonderful turnout for this. Um, we love hosting events like these to connect technologists and entrepreneurs um, with our government officials to make sure their voices are heard. So today we're going to be speaking about patent reform. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about Capital Factory. Capital Factory here is the entrepreneurial center of gravity in downtown Austin, Texas. We are a co-working space, an incubator, a funding accelerator, we have a fund, and then we're a huge event center. Um, so we host events like these, demo days, meetups with, for programming languages, etc. We've got about 60 of them that happen a, a month, and uh, we had about 25,000 programmers come through the space last year. Anyway, um, we're happy to kick this off. I'm gonna introduce Julie Hulls with Austin Technology Council. Thank you, JD, I appreciate that. Thank you guys for being here. I'm, we're thrilled about the crowd here today. Um, and can we say that we're excited about having a conversation about patent reform? I think it's safe to say, yes. Yeah, wow. <laughs> So, as many of you know, ATC represents actually 270 tech companies here in Central Texas, which um, is responsible for $21.5 billion in annual economic impact. Tech is um, a critical economic uh, engine here in Central Texas. We are very honored to uh, get to speak with the Senator today. Before we get to do that, um, I want to first say thank you to eBay. We would not be here this afternoon uh, without their support, so please say hello and thank you to Emily who I think is standing at the back of the room. And please join me in a round of applause for eBay for supporting this event. There she is. And the format today is gonna to be pretty informal. We wanna make sure that we, of course, hear from a couple of our industry leaders about their experiences. And uh, of course, we'll hear from the Senator about his leadership. Um, and I think hopefully he'll provide some good uh, uh, advice for our tech companies here in Central Texas and beyond in the state of Texas. Um, I'm gonna first introduce Lawrence Waugh, who is uh, Managing Director and Co-Founder of Calavista. He's gonna share his experience, and then we'll hear from Rackspace, and then the Senator. And then we're gonna open up the floor to hear from you for a um, short Q&A session. So, Lawrence. Thanks, Julie, again. I'm Lawrence Waugh. I'm um, Founder and Managing Partner at Calavista Software. We're a basically ghostwriters. We write software for other companies to sell as their own. First got involved with ATC about four or five years ago when I realized that the companies that we were, or the organizations we were sponsoring uh, in town, my partner and I really didn't attend many of their events. We didn't really care about them. On the other hand, ATC, we really found ourselves trying to chase to those events and get tickets and all the rest. And so we thought, well, why aren't we actually supporting these guys? So we started doing that. And uh, about a year ago, I was asked to be on the board of directors. And that's been a fascinating experience um, since. Uh, through that, I was able to meet Senator Cornyn about a year ago at HomeAway when he came to discuss patent reform. As I said, we write software for other companies and you know from Amex and Verizon all the way down to barely funded startups. So IP protection is very sort of near and dear to our heart. We have our own patents in place around development and delivery process. We've also been the uh, victim of, of patent trolls. So very interested in that. And so when the Senator came, I was able to um, hear him speak about patent reform. And for those knowing me, uh, not surprisingly, I had some pointed questions and comments. And, um, and he very graciously uh, introduced me to his legislative advisor, or referred me to him, who, to my great surprise, called me. And uh, I spent uh, many conversations uh, over the next several months with Noah Phillips on the phone talking about intellectual property and patent reform and small businesses in general and things that matter to us. And I was very uh, pleasantly surprised to realize that actually they really cared about what I thought about this kind of stuff. Um, which was reinforced when Grover uh, asked me to, in April, to go out to DC to attend a symposium on patent reform. Thought it would be good for ATC to have a representative there, good for me to get to meet more people, et cetera, et cetera. As it turned out, when I got off the plane, I found out that I, it was actually not so much a symposium as a panel, and I was on the panel. Um, so that was kind of exciting, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was actually a fantastic experience. Met a bunch of people, had some great conversations, learned a lot, and as part of that, was able to participate in the uh, startup day in DC, where they take 10 or 20 um, small businesses and startups from around the country, CEOs, and, and basically put them together with congressmen. And so I, I met 20 or so congressmen that day. Great conversations, again, about intellectual property, patent reform, small businesses, all the rest of that stuff. And discovered a couple things through this whole year with ATC on the board. Um, the first is that politics is politics. And no matter how many people you talk to uh, who are very, very excited about patent reform on the Hill, doesn't mean it's going to happen. 
Um, and I'm sure Senator Cornyn is going to talk a little bit about that and what that means and where to go from there. But the other thing is that these guys, you know, I, I, I'm the first to say, oh, I can't believe they're passing this legislation. How many senators have ever run a small business? And y you know what? Most of them probably haven't. But I have. And you have. And they are actually really interested in hearing what we have to say. And if we don't take the opportunity to tell them, it's hard to get upset about it. So thank you all for coming here. But also, I'd encourage everyone here to make their own um, opportunity. That is, write your congressman, write your senator, and tell them what issues concern you. My experience has been that they actually really are very, very interested. So I want to thank uh, Senator Cornyn for coming back to us and welcome him here. I'm really looking forward to what you've got to say on the state of uh, affairs on Capitol Hill. Thank you. So how do you all? Uh, my name is Van. I work in the office of the CTO at Rackspace. Uh, and part of what I do there is I run intellectual, intellectual pro property policy and strategy, which means uh, I manage our patent portfolio and I help fight patent trolls. Now, the way we got here is a little bit, is a little bit interesting because Rackspace for a long time was an integrator of technology. We, were, we brought things from other people, we put them together, we supported them, but we weren't necessarily an, an originator of technology. But it turns out that as soon as we started actually creating things, uh, we created OpenStack, we started really driving things, uh, driving things around the cloud and the opportunities there, and once we got big enough, we got sort of above that billion dollars in revenue mark, we're not as big as, as Dell or Google or some of these others, but we got just enough that we, we got on the, we, we saw a lot of people started to take notice of us, and not in a good way. And so we started to get it where, we, for our first 10 years, we had had no patent lawsuits. Within the course of about with two years, we had six. And then they just kept on going. And so we started to, at first, we did what other people do. We, we said, all right, we'll pay. This is, the, th this is the efficient way to do it. But we realized that these people are really a scourge. They started to come back again. We started to get repeat business. And so we decided, and again, not in a good way. And so we decided that what our policy would be is that we would need to fight every time every patent troll that came up against us. And so not too long ago, we had a patent troll uh, who came up against us because we have an app on the app stores. And you all know what happens when you do this on your phone, right? We have a free app on the app store, and they sued us and they, they sued us for millions of dollars, that w they said, uh, because their app, they said their patent covered rotating a cell phone. And we called them up and we, we said, this is completely bogus and we we're going to fight it. And before we could even get the, the words out of our mouth, they said, and we'll go away for $75,000. <laughs> now, this is nothing but just extortion. Uh, these are just smash and grab. It's, um, and so what we did is we said, no, we're not only going to do that, but even if it costs us more, we're going to fight. And so we took that patent to the Patent and Trademark Office, and we, we fought it. And as of last week, we got that patent invalidated. So it wasn't just... Thank you. <laughs> so it wasn't just us that got to benefit. It was also literally the 50 other companies that they were trying to go after and trying to shake down. Now, this is what we believe is the best policy for us as a business, but this is something that is not going to be fixed without active support and active leadership in the legislative sphere. I also had a chance to, uh, to work with NOAA in Senator Cornyn's office over this past year. And the amount of time and effort that the, the senator and his staff has put into this issue is really inspiring. So if there is one senator who is a stalwart friend to, to tech and really wants to protect the things that you are doing, you should be contacting Senator Cornyn. Uh, and th this just came out, the, you know, not paid to say that, but this is. Just because this is something 
where the trolls are individually moving down. Last year, over 50% of the, the lawsuits that were filed were not only by trolls, but 50% of those went for small businesses, meaning $10 million of revenue or under. These are the ones that are, that are started by people like Capital Factory that grow here, and we need to deal with them. So that's it. Thank you, Lawrence and Jay. We appreciate your, your perspective, clearly. And now for a proper introduction. We're very pleased to be joined today by Texas senior uh, U.S. Senator John Cornyn. Senator Cornyn previous, previously served as a district judge, Texas Supreme Court Justice, and our first Republican Attorney General since Reconstruction. In the 113th Congress, Senator Cornyn served as Minority Whip, giving Texas a stronger seat at the leadership table. He also served on two of the most critical committees in the U.S. Senate, the Finance and the Judi Judiciary <laughs> Committees, where he's helped to lead the fight for patent reform legislation. Please join me in welcoming Senator John Cornyn. Well, thanks for having me here at Capitol Factory today. Thanks for all of your interest in uh, what your government is doing for you um, and hopefully not to you. Um, you know, I know that, uh, well, I'm, I'm just guessing there are a lot of people here in the crowd who, who haven't had a lot of interaction with the, uh, with the Congress, uh, but I'm really glad to hear those of you who have uh, found the experience to be positive. But I will just tell you from my side of the table, the only way we can do, I can do my job, which is to represent 26 million plus Texans, is to hear from you. And one of the things I'm particularly proud of is uh, my team um, in Washington on the Judiciary Committee did a lot of really good work reaching out to stakeholders and people that know a lot more than we did about this problem, uh, at least from their personal experience. And that helped inform um, the decisions that I had to make in working uh, across the aisle uh, to try to make the progress we did in uh, patent uh, reform. But here's the frustration that I know all of you share. I know this because I saw the congressional approval ratings at 14%. Um, Senator McCain, who uh, in an exercise of his funny sense of humor, I call it gallows humor, says we're down to paid staff and blood relatives. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that, I think that probably exaggerates uh, the number. But here's the problem. The presidents for patent reform, Republicans for patent reform, Democrats for patent reform, so why haven't we been able to pass a bill uh, enacting patent reform? Well, it's because one or two key people in uh, important leadership positions in the Congress have, don't want it to happen. And they're listening to their constituency uh, that says we like things just the way they are. And so the point is, I think that just emphasizes to me the importance of you continuing to let your voice be heard and let your influence be heard in Congress so that uh, we can pass a reasonable patent reform bill early next year, which uh, I'm very optimistic we will. I don't want you to be discouraged at all. Sometimes these things take longer than, uh, than you would want. They usually do. Um, particularly if you want them to happen. And so uh, this, uh, this is part of the process, and my hope is early next year, perhaps the first quarter of next year, we'll be able to pass some legislation and send it to the president uh, for his signature. As you've heard from my introduction, I, my, I don't come from a technology background. I do come from a legal background, which uh, sort of informs my judgment in these areas. And I will tell you that one of the things that makes America different is the rule of law. And so I am a firm believer that uh, the rule of law makes it possible for entrepreneurs and startup companies represented here to be so successful. But of course, sometimes the, the pendulum swings too far. And when you get the sort of shakedown calls uh, that you heard about here a moment ago, which are not unknown in, uh, in litigation generally, then you realize the wheels have come off and there needs to be a, a course correction. But you, as the technology community, offer us as consumers uh, so much, and it's something that is really unrivaled in the rest of the world. Part of it is, I think, because of our risk-taking uh, culture um, that make us a little bit different, make us a little bolder, a little more adventuresome. When I talk to people about all the engineers that China is, um, is graduating, I said, well, 
someone educated in China as an engineer and somebody educated in America come from a completely different uh, uh, framework in terms of taking calculated risks and uh, innovating. And so I, this is something, a culture that I think we have that we need to preserve, that all of us benefit from in this country, and we don't need to kill it as a result of patent trolls who want nothing more than to nuisance settlements in litigation, particularly targeting small um, and uh, relatively uh, less funded businesses that uh, can't afford the lengthy litigation that Iraq space, uh, for example, can afford. So this is Im important, and I'm really happy to hear the, 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 the attitude that you've taken that, you know, we're going to litigate these cases. We're, gonna, we're not going to we're not going to settle these nuisance lawsuits in order to give them a fund from which they um, they uh, pay for other frivolous litigation. So this is uh, this is really a very important area to me because it's an important area to you, and this is important to the Texas economy, and particularly here in Austin, um, where we have this great innovative culture, this great startup culture that creates so much opportunity and excitement and prosperity for this entire community and creates jobs well-paying jobs for hard-working Americans. Uh, this is a win-win uh, proposition. But I don't want you to be discouraged by the uh, slow pace of things so far. Uh, we're going to get this done early next year. Um, you can count on it. OK, thank you, Senator, for the words of encouragement. I think they were. Yes, very much needed. And I, we're going to open it up to you guys. We, this is a pretty unique opportunity to gain firsthand access um, to both industry leaders and Senator Cornyn. So do we have any questions from our attendees? Yes, sir. So I believe in going against patent trolls, but I'm on the flip side. We truly have uniques, IP and ideas and visions 15 years ago that we came up with, how are we supposed to fight the companies that can starve us out because they know it's a money game to be able to wait out a smaller company that invested their lives, their savings, their family time, and everything to start this up. There's two ways on this. How do, how do you, what's the legislation that's still going to protect that, and how does that differ from how it has been? Uh, I'm Jonathan Joseph, and I'm with Quantum Interface. We own patents for the use of motion to control things. We did that 15 years ago. Now it's just starting to come into the industry. Well, that's a great question. And so what is the definition of a patent troll? Um, you may have a, your own definition. My definition is somebody who buys a patent, not for the purpose of making or creating anything, but for the purpose of having a, a basis to go litigate and uh, uh, extort a, a nuisance settlement from the, uh, an, another patent holder. So, but it, it, your, the point you make is important, and this is why we need to have uh, the appropriate requirements in the patent reform litigation, which don't prejudice a legitimate patent holder that does have rights that need to be litigated in court, but does give the court an opportunity to expedite that, because one of the biggest uh, kisses of death in litigation is it never seems to end. And when it never ends, it, uh, it will kill even a um, legitimate uh, business with a uh, um, litigation cost and just the delay and the distraction of, of litigation. So don't take it from this that anybody who files a patent infringement lawsuit is a patent troll. I certainly don't believe that. And uh, there have to be avenues for legitimate patent claims to be litigated, which is the point I tried to make early on about my firm belief in the rule of law and the ability to protect patents and contracts and your reasonable expectations in terms of reaching uh, deals with other people. Uh, but it is, of course, a question about balance. It is about judges uh, being aggressive in moving cases through their court, uh, getting rid of the chaff and uh, making sure that the legitimate and bona fide cases have an opportunity to d be decided early uh, rather than after costly and unnecessary uh, litigation. Um, let me just, uh, I have many of the same concerns. Actually, that's why I started talking to Noah in the first place, and we, we talked through this quite a bit. Um, the, the, the Patent Reform Act that passed through the House, which is the only one that actually passed, 
uh, address it in, in this way. What it, it, it in no way affected my ability as a patent holder myself to uh, pursue my patent or protection under my patent. What it did is it made sure that I had to basically have my skin in the game. What I couldn't do is sell my patent to someone else and say, go litigate it for me, and if you get money, give it to me. If I was going to g derive money from that, uh, depending on how much um, the, the suit was for, then I had to actually have my name on the suit. That is, I had to be involved in the lawsuit. And so it shouldn't prevent you from doing that. Uh, and, and that made me feel much better. The other th uh, provision that, that works against us in that area is that um, currently, um, really the legal fees are up to the individual um, parties and, and only in exceptional circumstances will a judge award um, the losing party to have to pay the winning party's uh, legal fees. In, in the House bill, um, that was sort of overturned to the point that, yeah, basically if you lost, unless the judge decided that, no, you actually had a legitimate suit, you lost, but you, know, you had a legitimate suit, then the loser had to pay. And, and that was to, you know, to keep the, the trolls from basically just, you know, what, what have they got to lose? Well, they, they now have a lot to lose. Now, my concern about that, of course, is if uh, Microsoft sues me, uh, be, or I sue Microsoft over my patent, well, they're going to put 50 lawyers on it. That bill is going to be astronomical and it will bankrupt me if I have to pay it. But that just means that I need to really have a legitimate suit. I am exposed to a judge saying, eh, you know, you lost, so it wasn't legitimate, uh, clearly. A and that is a concern, I admit. But, but I will say that my concerns about not being able to pursue my patent were, or my patents were, uh, were sort of mitigated by, by those provisions. Um, there, there it is still, you know, some, some cause for worries, a small patent holder, but it does keep the guy who sued us or tried to sue us for buying a fax machine at Office Max um, because it could actually send a fax to an e email address, and that was covered by their patent, apparently. They sent out 17,000 letters asking for an average of about $20,000, $25,000 each. That's $400 million at issue. Um, it, it stops that, and so there, there has to be a balance. Anyway, so I, I do agree with your concern, but I, I think the, the real effort has been made to try and keep that in balance. One quick thing about that. Uh, if we came up, if someone came up to us with a patent that we agreed valid and infringed, it, we would immediately try and license it, no questions asked. That has not yet happened. We, we have gotten the things that have come up to against us and the things that are most often litigated in, in large are things that are completely frivolous. That said, I, the, there was a lot of stakeholders on all sides of the, the the, this legislation that went in. And the important things around it was, number one, skin in the game, and also being clear about what it is that you purport your patent covers. Uh, so right currently, the law is in a such a state where all you have to say is, you know, I own this patent, I think you're infringing. And that is sufficient to stop, to, to, to stop a company and force them to spend literally hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. In this one, one of the, I think the key provisions is, is true pleading of here's what our patent is, here's how we think what you're doing applies to our patent. Without that, we've had people literally come up to us, uh, us and say, well, you know your, your products, you tell us where you're infringing. That's true. No, that's true. Uh, and that should not be something that, that goes back to just the whole shakedown. Thing, um, yeah. It, the tr the rule has been notice pleadings. In other words, say I got a claim, and we'll leave to discovery for you to figure out what that claim entails, which can be enormously expensive and can take years. So you're going to have to tell people in detail what your patent is and how it's been infringed. And then, the, perhaps the most controversial part of this was the fee shifting uh, provision uh, for some of the folks on the other side of the aisle, in particular. And uh, what Senator Chuck Schumer and I were able to work out in the Senate version, which is a little different from the House version, is there isn't a default position. In other words, if you lose the lawsuit, you don't automatically have to pay the fees of the other side because there are legitimate claims where people lose on the merits. Let's say the jury decides against you. or And so the rule is, I think we said, no reasonable uh, uh, basis uh, for the claim. There has to be a hearing and the judge has to make a decision, and that could be subject to a uh, interlocutory appeal. So we make sure the judge just doesn't sweep it under the rug or say, well, it was, you know, it was, uh, um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna make any decision here. You have to make a decision, and the legal standard is very clear, and I think the deterrent value against frivolous claims is, uh, is gonna be somewhat effective. 
Senator, I want to ask your opinion about what might be a source of proactivity around this. So um, the U.S. Patent and Trade Office, at long last, after years of talking about it, is finally rolling out a small business assistance program to try to strengthen the hand of small businesses moving forward. In the past, all that stuff has been canned. It's just been websites. Now they say this is actually, it's no longer just virtual, but it's boots on the ground. And as a measure of it, they're coming to Austin in mid-November at a conference here to roll it out formally. They're bringing a team down to talk about it. I, I happen to be with the Small Business Innovation Research Program the Department of the Navy. We're concerned that they're not testing it out with entrepreneurs like all the people you know, here. And so, you know, we're wondering, do you see your committee or perhaps the Senate Small Business Committee interested in field hearings where you would bring entrepreneurs in so that these folks can say, here's what we think about the effectiveness of that small business assistance program so that it actually does do the right stuff? Well, it sounds like a, you know, sort of a good idea in the abstract. What, one thing would worry me a little bit is, as you know, uh, we had a problem with the diversion of the patent fees uh, from things other than reviewing patents and a financing shortage at the patent office, which has caused enormous delays. I hate to see them get involved in some sort of uh, uh, rabbit trails, even though they sound like they might be beneficial around the margins. So I think that would be appropriate to look into that further. I frankly didn't personally know about that effort. I'm sure my staff does, but uh, we'll certainly follow up on it. Thank you. My name is Grant Rostig, and I'm considering starting a small business. One of the things that concerns me is um, the costs of dealing with a patent office in, in multiple ways. Sure, filing patents, and I, I suppose that's a very established procedure, but how do I not violate patents? Perhaps the um, office could um, enhance their way of doing business so it's easier for the, s the public who they are serving to comply with the laws and understand the patents better. And I'm also concerned, I understand that uh, a number of years ago there may have been some bad patents issued because there was an, a push maybe 10, 15 years ago to get them through the system. So perhaps we also need to reduce the number of patents that can be filed on obvious stuff like you know the software we do. Um, and thirdly, I, the open source movement where software is done for free has become very large and perhaps that, I don't know how that relates, but I just felt I, I would want to mention that. So the difficulty with the patent system, th this actually gets to one of my hobbies. I, 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 I built a, a, a system that would data mine the patent office to find oh prior right. art. Uh, the Is it open source? <laughs> <laughs> I had that idea also. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the it's actually very it's actually very difficult because one of the things is that patent is the, the patent is designed to not be accessible to lay people. Oh. It is designed to actually be only accessible to one of skill in the art, meaning you have to have essentially that's usually uh, thought of as at least a bachelor's or master's in the particular area that you're looking at. Now it should be clearly uh, comprehensible to that person, but it's that is not most people. The second thing is that the patent system allows you to what's called be your own lexicographer, i.e. make stuff up. Uh, you get to make up a word and then assign your own definition to it because you're at the edge of things. There may not be actual names for the things that you are creating. These things together, though, tend to make it very, very difficult, uh, di difficult to search and to really understand what is in this pile of documents that is the, that, that, that is the patent office. Uh, I think that if I were to have one wish, it would be there. there's something called 112, which basically means that you need to cl clearly describe what it is that your patent's about. If we had a lot more teeth in 112 in the patent office, I think that would help with a lot of these things. So there are entire industries built up around exactly this problem of trying to understand what patents are out there. I know that, well, there's fluid innovation that involved in that, Enlightened and Rex and other companies that, that do um, specifically searching on that. But I agree. I, I think that uh, one of the problems with the patent system is that it's designed to be uh, used by those skilled in, in, not only skilled in the art, but that art. And so <coughs> y y it's very difficult to, to understand. So, th so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that 
if we can only patent this, pass this Patent Reform Act, everything's going to be great. There's all sorts of problems. Again, we, we hold our own patents. Um, I could give you nightmare stories about the patent office. There's all sorts of problems. Um, this is not a panacea, but um, I, I, <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> it's, it's hard. I'm Eric Overton. I'm CEO of Focus Embedded. Uh, officially, what we do is we do research and development for people who have ideas. Uh, unofficially, we crush dreams. Uh, and the reason I say that um, is because I would observe over patents, um, the value of an idea today in a post-industrial society is very, uh, very different from what it was in 1790 when the Commerce Department got started. And we were looking at the world through the lens of an agrarian society coming off a, a guild system, essentially. Um, one of the problems we face today is that the idea is worth a lot less than you might think it is, because what is really worthwhile is the hard work that got the idea to the marketplace where it was generating revenue for somebody. Uh, I see dozens of ideas every day. I give dozens of ideas away every day because I don't have time to do them. Um, what's in short supply right now is the STEM people who can go in there and actually make one of these great ideas work. And I don't know what the answer is as far as patent trolling, but the problem seems to be that people will say, hey, I saw it on Star Trek. I got a legal mind. I'll file the patent. And now that it's out there, I can come back after the fact, after somebody else has made all the investment and hard work to bring it to a reality, and say, well, that was my idea. I, I deserve a piece of that. And that utterly distorts the marketplace. And I'm kind of curious, are there thoughts uh, about patent reform that address the fact that there's a certain amount of re uh, reduction to practice um, that's got to be taken into account because that's expensive and that's hard and that's the barrier to entry to the marketplace. Um, and that's what people are really investing in more than the ideas because there are more good ideas out there than will ever get done. <laughs> I feel like I'm, um, uh, so it's in, so I am, I am not here to speak for the senator. I actually have some real issues with, with patent reform. I, in the panel, the, or with patents in general, in the panel, one of the things that um, someone proposed and I actually agreed with is, you know, there shouldn't be software patents at all. Um, and honestly, if software patents were outlawed tomorrow, I'd be all for it. Um, they're not, so <laughs> um, they're not, so we have to have our own because we have to be able to protect ourselves. But, uh, you know, the idea of, of someone being able to patent the fact that you click one button and order something is, is absurd to me. Um, and the idea that you can rotate your screen. And, you know, someone, they spent money and they got a patent on that or they wrote an idea. Um, I, I agree with you in, in concept that, that patents are, are basically misused. Um, they don't, you know, uh, they often do not patent a truly, you know, if you think about what is a patent supposed to be, it's supposed to be um, uh, original and non-intuitive to someone skilled in the art. I see all sorts of patents out there that are quite intuitive to people skilled in the art, and yet they have a patent on it. Um, and maybe they got it from Star Trek, in which case it's not really original with them, they're just first to file. Um, <laughs> you know, and so there are all sorts of problems with it. I, and I, again, I'm, I, I'm, I'm with you. Um, you, you, you know, again, you, there's, you go through Fluid Innovation, or you go through all these other companies that will help you find, uh, oh, where am I violating this patent? But it doesn't mean that the patents really should be there in the first place. So I, I agree, <laughs> sorry. So. I think that this actually gets back to, uh, so there are two, two basic issues. You're talking about essentially the source of all these patents and what can we do in order to make that a little bit more rigorous. And there have been some various questions about that. Whereas a lot of the, the legislation that's been addressed and that, that Senator Cornyn has been, uh, been working out is after the patents have been granted, how can, you, how can you deal with that? I agree that both things need to be addressed, however, a an invalid patent that sits out there is basically just somebody wasted their money. An invalid patent that is asserted against a bunch of money is a patent troll. Uh, and so I think that while, yes, both things need to be addressed, making it less, uh, ma making it less financially lucrative to take these things and say, you know what, I've got the presumption of validity. The court has to agree that this is a valid patent unless you go through a lot of hoops otherwise to, to prove otherwise. That that's a hard hurdle to bear, and that's this asymmetry gives rise to the ability for people to go in and just say, "Give me your money." And that's why we need the the litigation reform, as well as some stuff in the patent office, but at minimum that too.
Hi there, my name is Lance Anderson. I work for Greenberg Traurig, a defense-oriented uh, law firm. Um, but one thing that has happened is uh, the Alice decision of this, this last year has really moved the bar and you're watching you know, patents fall on a daily basis uh, through the review process, which it sounds like Rackspace adequately put to use. So does that move the bar a little bit for the urgency of patent reform legislation? Do you think the judicial system's somewhat kind of helping this process and weeding out the you know, patents that shouldn't be patentable? Well, I would say that <clears throat> that the the courts have been active in this area, and it, uh, you know this is one of the things that people have argued that just let Congress step back and let the courts litigate these issues, and they'll you know it'll, it'll all work out. But uh, I don't think uh, the sorts of things we're talking about today, in terms of uh, litigation reform, are going to uh, that the, the courts can adequately deal with. Uh, without some additional guidance, some additional uh, rules uh, from the Congress. Um, but I do know there are other issues in the, uh, in the patent field that you've heard discussed here a little bit that, um, that I think are going to continue to evolve through a, sort of a common law interpreted, interpreted process by, uh, by the courts. I just give me, uh, give me a chance to do a little uh, advertisement. So you can go on my website, cornyn.senate.gov, or you can call my Austin office. I've got an Austin office here. And uh, anybody who answers the phone, uh, if you tell them that you'd like to offer some of your thoughts on patent reform and, uh, or any topic uh, that comes to mind, and we'll, that'll get that to the right person in my office. So I just want to make that uh, advertisement and solicitation. Please let us know um, what your correct uh, ideas are, things we can do to be more responsive in this area. We're not the experts. You are. Uh, but we have the, the forum. Uh, to try to make those things happen. Very good. Perfect way probably to end the conversation uh, this afternoon. We very much appreciate you being here, Senator Cornyn. Thank you very much for your leadership, and we will take your advice and continue to be very patient. Um, I would also like to uh, encourage our entrepreneurs and our um, executives and member companies to get involved. Uh, we heard uh, for the first few years that we uh, initiated this conversation that entrepreneurs and executives really don't like to get involved in government, but clearly this is a very important issue that impacts every tech company's bottom line. So, and the senator has been very generous in really offering his time here today and his leadership throughout the year on this very important issue. So these issues do matter. Um, policy does intersect business here uh, as it relates to this topic and other topics. So. Um, of course, I'm going to give a plug for ATC. If you guys are not members yet of the Austin Tech Council, please join us today. We've had a great year this year, and uh, please stay tuned for a pretty special announcement tomorrow. Um, we are very excited to launch um, a, a new endeavor here in Central Texas that will be the first of its kind in the country. So we're very excited to share that news with you starting tomorrow. We want to say a very special thank you to our executives for lending their important perspective. Thanks to Capital Factory for hosting. Thank you to eBay and to Emily for uh, her support, their support. And thanks to each of you for making time this afternoon. We encourage you to enjoy Austin Startup Week. I think this year is maybe the biggest and the best Yet, congratulations to Jacqueline Hughes for hosting such an amazing uh, opportunity for Austin to showcase everything that we have to offer the tech community here. So thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you soon.